Hello everyone, and welcome to this tutorial on how to parse XML files using VBA. Whether you're working in a data-intensive industry, or you're simply looking to extract structured information from XML files into Excel, understanding XML parsing is a valuable skill to have. In this video, we're going to break down what XML files are and their structure, including elements, attributes, and hierarchy. We'll also introduce you to XML parsing and VBA using the MSXML library. And to ensure you get a comprehensive understanding, we'll walk through examples ranging from simple to nested XML files. So let's dive in and unravel the intricacies of XML parsing in VBA. Here we have an example XML file open inside a browser that we'll be parsing later in the video. In the digital world, XML, or Extensible Markup Language, plays a crucial role as a universally accepted standard for structuring data. Unlike HTML, which is designed to display data, XML is all about carrying data in a format that is both human-readable and machine-readable. The magic of XML lies in its elements, attributes, and hierarchical nesting. Elements are the basic building blocks defined by tags which encapsulate the data. Attributes provide additional information about elements, often acting as metadata. The hierarchical structure allows for nesting of elements within other elements, making it possible to represent complex relationships and datasets. As you can see in this book's XML file, the tag called catalog serves as the root element of the XML structure. It acts as a container that encapsulates all the book records in the dataset. Nested within this catalog root element, we have individual book tags, each representing a distinct book record. Then within these book elements, you'll find additional nested elements like author, title, genre, and so on, providing detailed data for each book. Also, take note that each book element includes an attribute called ID which assigns a unique identifier, such as BK101, to the book record. Understanding this XML structure is essential before we delve into VBA code examples that demonstrate how to extract this very data into Excel worksheets. All right, as you can see, I've already prepared an Excel sheet with columns labeled as book ID, author, title, genre, price, publish date, and description. These are the details we're going to extract from our XML file and populate into this Excel sheet. Now let's open the VBA editor and look at the code in Module 1. This code will read book details from the books.xml file and populate them into the sheet 2. So let's walk through the code to understand how it works. First, we declare an object called XML doc to hold our XML document and another object called XML node to navigate through individual nodes or elements in the XML. Next, we initialize the XML doc object as a new instance of the msxml2.dom document 6.0 class. Now you might be wondering, what is this class and why are we using it? Well, it is a part of Microsoft's XML core services, and it's essentially a library that provides a set of services that allow us to access XML documents as document object model objects. This document object model or DOM representation of the XML allows us to easily navigate, read, and manipulate the elements and attributes within the XML file. So when we create a new instance of this class, what we're really doing is setting up a programmable interface to handle our XML data. This will allow us to load the XML file into memory and then navigate through its structure as if it were a tree of nested objects, making it much easier to extract the data we need. Next, we configure two important properties, async and validate on parse. Async stands for asynchronous, a term that usually implies doing multiple things at the same time. In our scenario, setting async to false ensures that the code will pause and wait for the XML file to fully load before continuing. This guarantees that we have all the data we need before processing it. Then we set validate on parse to false. 
This setting tells the code that we're not interested in validating the XML file against a specific set of rules or a schema. We're skipping this step so we can get straight to reading the data. Now that we've covered the initial setup, let's move on to the next crucial step, loading the XML file into our XML doc object. Here, the load method is called to open and read the XML file from the specified path. The code checks whether the XML file was loaded successfully. If it fails to load, a message box will pop up saying, failed to load XML file, exiting, and the subroutine will end with exit sub. By adding this conditional check, we make our code more robust, guarding against scenarios where the XML file might not load correctly. Perhaps due to a wrong file path or other issues, this helps to prevent errors later on when we start parsing the XML data. Great! Once the XML file is successfully loaded, we initialize a variable i with the value 2. This will be used to determine the row in the Excel worksheet where the parsed XML data will begin to be written. The next block of code is a loop that goes through each child node under the root catalog element in the XML document. Here, XML doc dot document element dot child nodes contains all the book elements within the catalog root element. The loop will iterate through each of these book elements one by one. Inside this loop, we use several lines of code to populate our Excel worksheet. The purpose of these lines is to extract the values of various XML elements and attributes and place them in the corresponding columns in the Excel worksheet. For example, this line of code will get the ID attribute from the current book element and put it into the first column, column A of row I, starting with row 2 in the worksheet. This process is repeated for other XML tags such as author, title, genre, price, etc each placed in their respective columns in Excel. At the end of each iteration, we increment I by 1 to move to the next row for the following book element. This loop continues until we've extracted all the data from each book element within the XML document. Finally, after we've looped through all the book elements and populated the Excel worksheet, we come to the last part of the code. This line is crucial for freeing up the system resources that were allocated for the XML doc object. Setting it to nothing ensures that we're being responsible with memory management. Alright, let's see this code in action. I'm going to run it now and you should see the Excel worksheet being populated with the book details from our XML file. As you can see, the code has successfully read the book details from the books.xml file and populated them into the columns of our Excel worksheet. We've got the book ID, author, title, genre, price, publish date, and description all neatly laid out. This shows how effectively VBA can parse a simple XML file and convert it into a more human-readable and manageable format. Now that we've successfully parsed a simple XML file, in the next part of this video, we'll be stepping it up a notch. We'll examine how to handle more complex XML files with nested elements, and of course, how to parse them with VBA. So stick around. Okay, we've successfully parsed book details from an XML file in the first example. Now, let's challenge ourselves with a slightly more complex XML file that contains details about universities, faculties, and professors. I've got Sheet 3 opened here, which contains an empty table ready to populate with data. The headings are University Name, Faculty Name, Professor ID, Professor Name, and Subject. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the code in Module 2 to see how it works. Much like the first example, we initialize an XML document object using the msxml2.domdocument.6.0 class to handle the XML file. 
Again, the async and validate on parse properties are set to false, so that our program waits for the XML to fully load and does not require validation against a specific set of rules. Now you may notice two loops in this code. The first loop iterates through each faculty in the XML. And the second loop iterates through each professor within those faculties. As we loop, we populate the Excel sheet. You can see that we use the getAttribute method to get attributes like the university name, faculty name, and professor ID. And then we use getElementsByTagName to fetch the text content for the professor's name and subject. So you might be wondering why we use XML doc dot document element dot get attribute for the university name, but XML faculty dot get attribute for the faculty name. The reason is that the document element refers to the root element of the XML document, which in our case is the university. Therefore, this line of code fetches the university's name attribute directly from the root. On the other hand, XML faculty dot get attribute is used within the loop that iterates through each faculty element. It fetches the name attribute of the current faculty we're looping through. Also, you'll notice that we're using get elements by tag name to fetch data like the professor's name and subject. This method is different from get attribute. While it is used to get the value of a specific attribute like an ID, or a name from an element, get elements by tag name is used to grab elements that have a specific tag name. This is useful when you want to get data enclosed within a particular tag, like name or subject in our case. The zero next to get elements by tag name indicates that we're interested in the first occurrence of this tag within the current element we're looping through. If there were multiple name or subject tags within a single professor element, and we wanted the second occurrence, we would use one, and so on. Great! Let's now run this code to see how it populates the Excel sheet with data from our university.xml file. As you can see, the code has successfully read the university details, along with faculty and professor information from the XML file and populated them into our Excel worksheet. Learning to parse more complex XML files like this can be incredibly useful for a wide range of applications, from data analysis to content migration. And as we've seen today, VBA makes this process pretty straightforward. In this video, we've covered some essential ground on how to use VBA to parse XML files and populate Excel worksheets, we began by understanding what XML is and how its structure of elements, attributes, and nested tags is designed to both carry data and make it readable. We then moved on to practical VBA code examples, examining each line to get a grasp of its function. We learned how to use the msxml 2domdocument6 class to create an XML document object and manipulate its properties. Then we looked at the difference between get attribute and get elements by tag name methods to fetch specific types of data. Finally, we touched upon some best practices, including memory management by setting our XML document object to nothing after usage. I hope this video provides a solid foundation for your future XML parsing tasks using VBA in Excel. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, Please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials. Feel free to drop your questions or thoughts in the comments section below. Happy coding and I'll see you in the next video.